Wanderers, welcome to the Wandering Dutchman podcast, season two, episode 26. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Velpin Trucking and Disposal. Our title sponsor is Velpin Trucking and Disposal. It's that time of year, folks. Time to spring clean. You can take the time and have the hassle of bagging everything up, throwing it in your vehicle, and dumping it in the dumpster. Or you can call our friends at Velpin Disposal and get a roll-off dumpster in any size that you need. They have dumpsters in all sizes. Big spring cleaning projects need big dumpsters. Velpin will drop the dumpster off. You call when you are done, and they will haul it away. Hassle-free, and you can do it on your own time. Don't be silly and think you have all the time. Call Velpin today. The Wandering Dutchman Podcast. Where none of us are Dutch, David Allen Smoker. Mm -mm. But we all live in Holland, Indiana. Join us where we talk about what everybody wanders about. This is the Wandering Dutchman Podcast coming to you from Smoker's Lounge. The Wandering Dutchman! Yeah! Yeah! The Wandering Dutchman! Yeah! Yeah! Here we go! Back in the saddle! Season two, yeah. Episode twenty six. Yeah, this is coming out on Friday, April twelfth, and here we are sitting across from me, looking very much a man of wisdom and not arrogance, wearing his unibop unibopper, the old bopper, the old the unibopper. Same clothes I had on Wednesday. Yep. We don't want to talk about our financial struggles here at the Wandering Dutchman podcast, but it is our friend, Zachary David Masoner. Yo, yo, yo. Sitting in the middle, supporting the turquoise. The glisten is gone, but he's still here. It's our buddy viewing the world from the perspective of the rose-colored glasses is our buddy, David Allen Smoker. And you're unofficial host, truly, <laughs> truly glad to be here with these two gentlemen and Couch Guy, because Couch Guy is here too. It's weird introducing yourself, but I am KC. Esquire. There we go. And it's still I good. Cigar from that. But Do now, you? with everybody knowing who's in the room and what's going on, mm -hmm. let's introduce our first segment sponsor, Matt Krieg of Krieg Insurance. This segment is brought to you by our buddy, Matt Krieg of Krieg Insurance. Matt is all about finding you the right coverage for you, your family, your business, and your budget. Matt scours all companies, local and national, to find you the best fit for your needs and budget. Give Matt a call today and see what he can do for you. We only recommend the best, and Matt is the best. All right, and we're back. Here we go. Let's hey. get it, get it, get it, get it. Some big news, fellas. What is it? I was finally able to live out my dream. Yeah! Hey. Uh, so on April 4th, yours truly, set in a very chilly Huntingburg League Stadium press box with friend of the program, the true professional amongst us. Right. Curdy G. Right. Yeah. And Curdy G and I called seven innings of baseball, and I had a blast. You did good. Yeah. Well, I know there's no nah. well about it. Like you, uh, like I, David, I had completely forgot that this was happening. And then Dave had texted me and he's like, Mace, are you listening to Casey? And I was like, holy shit. So then I immediately uh, jumped on the tune in app and dialed up a 100.9 WBDC. And uh, there it was music to my ears, man. You did well. Like what? your color commentary and like your input and, and everything like it, like it worked. And I think I told you this, I said, uh, this thing ever dries up. I think you got a spot in there for sure, man. Well, it was, um, uh, you know, it was fun and I, I got to thank my wife first. Um, you know, I got, well, you're not getting a Grammy or nothing. Well, I know, but I got to thank her because oh. tonight was an off night for 
uh, the middle school baseball. We've the weather this mm, week has been a nightmare. Garbage or the the weather last yeah, week when we're recording this has been garbage. Yeah, um, but I just kind of I think she thought I had practice tonight, mm. and oh, I cool. kind of this morning was like, uh, I'm gonna be on WBDC with my buddy Kurt Gutzel doing color commentary for the Raiders versus the Rangers, and she was like, oh, and I was like, yeah, I thought I told you. Okay. I think it was strategy. Yeah. See you uh, later. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And I think the cool, the unique thing of it is, is you don't realize, you know, Kurt's been doing it so long and he's so good at it. You know, Kurt does a really good job. Um, and he was a great broadcast partner to have. But, uh, you know, just kind of watching the game up there, baseball's got enough, um, you know, pauses where you can talk about some things. But I really tried to focus on while an at bat's going on, I'm not interrupting his call. Exactly. Because we had two pitchers tonight that worked very quick. And and kudos, and because we're recording this on the fourth, uh, Keaton Allen threw a no hitter tonight. Yeah, he did. Uh, when yeah. you figure Holland he was kid, fellow, yeah. co- fellow Holland kid, you fellow fig- podcaster. Yeah, it's true. Tri- triple yeah, th- I'm sure they'll probably yeah. talk about it. A Shout bit. out to the triple th- threat oh, yeah. boys. But, you know, and he did it. You know, 88, 89 pitches, I think, was the final count. Oh, wow. He had three walks, one hit batsman. Like, damn near perfect game. Uh, but defensively, uh, defense behind him, they were great. And, you know, they jumped. Southridge jumped on that first arm early. Guy looked like he just didn't settle in. And, uh, you know, after that, the Raiders were able to tack on a couple more. But I had a blast. And it's, and it's weird because people would be like, are you nervous because you're talking to a bunch of people? And it's like. It's just like doing this. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, there's yeah. there was Scott Solomon. Uh, there was uh, the Foose boy, youngest one, Brogan. He runs the scoreboard. I think his name's Brogan. Is that right? That yeah, sounds right. And then the kid that broke his arm. Yeah, that's Brogan. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then there. Was, I guess I just didn't know for sure if he was the youngest, but there's definitely Brogan Foose. Yeah. There was a there was Curdy G. There was me, and then there was a newspaper guy up there. A I think newspaper guy. Yeah, I wasn't for sure. We just kind of up there, but. Uh, it was fun. And it hey, was, I'm going to need sheer press pass. Yeah. Newspaper guy. I will tell you the tough thing. Uh, cause Sitting Brenda, on an aluminum chair? Uh, yes. <laughs> because it's, we all know how well you don't like those. Yeah. Oh, so it was cold out, too. Oh, I heard it. Yeah, Brenda, her case brought, a, brought heater, a heater. Oh, yeah. That heater, heater set right there, and it was perfect because it just it was, it was took the chill out of the air. It good, was nice. Good, but, uh, good, good. Yeah, you kind of sit up there, and it was about the fourth where I was like, man. I really probably could pee right now. Oh, yeah. And I started thinking about it, and then, you know, the fifth happened and the sixth happened. And Man, like, how do you – I've never thought about that. Like, he can't just get up and, and he drank, he drank a soda while he was up there. Yeah. He had a, a A&W Root Beer Zero. Oh, yeah. And because yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't think – I was like, there's I don't need to take anything up here. Like, I don't need anything. I just need to be locked in and doing what I'm doing. But by the end of the game, I was ready to pee. So, I <laughs> wonder was, if he's got a catheter bag strapped on. No, not a chance. Uh, hey, there's not a, uh, yeah, there's not a halftime in baseball. Like yeah. in basketball, you know. Well, you, you got this. St- oh, no, that's, I imagine if it ends on the seventh inning, you don't have a. Well, them, ha- well, them uh, half times, they, they do, uh, hell, like basketball, they do like uh, halftime stats and shit on the radio. Yeah. Well, and a lot of that, I guess they do get a little break. They get, they get a little break. Yeah, he's got a usually like a uh, network affiliate. Um, They'll interview yeah, uh, produce, produce channel Matt Painter or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Uh so it was a blast and and I it was fun seeing like the messages from people and uh you know, some conversations and um you know, a lot of people reached out and or you know, and Curdy G even gave a, share, a shout out there talking yeah. about the wandering yeah. Dutchman. That's awesome. I heard that. I heard that. Um but it, it was great and I hope uh, those out in uh listener land enjoyed it and uh I would say you know, if schedules align again, Curdy G may give me a call and, you know, be able to be on the call with him again. But yeah, I'd uh, say you earned your spot. Yeah. Like, sure. you're, well, you're, it, you're, you're like, if, like, if, if that was a first date, I, I would say you'd probably get a call oh, for a second. Yeah. One. yeah. And it was, uh, I just kind of kept reminding myself, like, don't interrupt, like, don't interrupt him. Don't interrupt him. Don't yeah. interrupt him. Right. And, uh, it worked out pretty well. And then he'd be like, hey, you heard from Big Mace yet? And I was like, oh, no, there's there's some other funny comments that, you know, people want to 
ask questions about. So it's weird because like we've texted him, we've texted him like, yeah. "Why is that football game?" Like, yeah, hey, yeah. the game. Listen to you on the call. Yeah, and that's exactly how like because he's up there. He was he was watching the Indiana State game. We watched that Sycamore's fall there in the NIT championship. Yeah, bummer. But uh, you know he's watching that and Cardinals game. He was talking those, about the Cardinals. Yeah, uh, Foosboy was watching the Cardinals game over yeah, there because yeah. he got. Uh, somebody said, "Was it you sent him a message about St. Louis?" Yeah, I said, "Bite your tongue." Yeah, go yeah. Redbirds. I th- I was waiting for him to uh, call me out on that, but like, cause he he has before. Uh, whenever I've messaged him something, cause it was uh, oh, it was a, when in a football game uh, later in the playoffs, and John Schneider sounded like death. Like he had uh, he was like, I mean, he sounded rough. Like his throat, he had like a mean case of laryngitis yeah. or the frogs or whatever and i had messaged kurt and i was like geez louise uh somebody needs to get johnny a a, a throat lozenge and he's like <laughs> playing hurt man playing hurt playing you, hurt you no know, but he uh yeah, and the cool rough. thing about it is and he's been doing it so long so we get up there and for, at the middle school level we keep book on an ipad and i was like perfect i'm gonna bring this with me to do like it'll be great you know, just be able to make it work. And then like, it did pretty good for some of that other stuff, but also keeping it by hand, it was easier to refer back to, but I was like, that's kind of his job as the analyst. Like mine's just to add some input on some things. And so he was, I mean, he's, this is when we sit down, you know, kind of, we're going through all that stuff and national anthem and you don't think about it, but the game started a little bit early. And he's like, I hate when they do this. Because they run the coach's interview like they had Gene's interview and yeah. Coach Howard from Forest Park's interview. And, uh, you know, and it kind of runs through there. And they, uh, you know, they cut it short because the lady, Cecilia, at the thing, he can hear her. He doesn't patch her through. So he basically makes a phone call to BDC to talk to her in the engineering room. And he can hear her. I couldn't. And I was like, I'm kind of glad I couldn't. Cause could you imagine like somebody if you're not used to it, like, Hey, we're, we're going into break. And then, you know, Kurt would be like, Hey, we got a minute. And like, I didn't have like a watch or clock where I'm watching. So <clears throat> there's be some time. That's where- what I was wondering. Cause if there were some times where you guys were talking yeah. or you were talking whenever you came back. Live. Yeah. Well, and there was, Hey, and we're back out here at beautiful league stadium. And you just got done talking about something, that something was, else. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it was just it was constant conversation. But I just wonder how he knew, like that you were going back live, like you're coming back from that's, break. But he would have her. Seal, yeah. He so he has her. his, and Dave could probably comment on it. But he's probably got a like a little four channel box almost. It looked like mm-hmm. got it all plugged in. Yeah. And he he runs his phone through one of them that he's attached to it, and he's got her on the line, and then the rest of that goes through. Yeah you know what it does but yeah it i mean seamless process and he's like hey we're just i'm gonna bring it in we're gonna intro i'm gonna intro you and then just kind of talk about this and then that's we were off and running and it was just uh yeah it was fun and i i enjoy watching baseball i mean we've talked about it you know like you're a football guy yeah you know dave you like rodeo and baseball never really watched rodeo okay dave you like horse shows whatever (laughs) i don't watch horse. okay dave (laughs) i like music music Music. Dave likes music. Hey, speaking of music, how about our buddy Zach Bryan bringing uh, fans up on the stage, making That's dreams it. come true, man? He did it like twice in the last couple of days. Oh, one really? one of them was in. Uh, okay, I'm going to screw this up, but it was I think it was in New York or he was in Philadelphia, some island or whatever. Maybe it was in Philadelphia. I don't know where it was, but then another one was in Toronto, and he uh, it was uh, what's the song? Um, you remind me of my daddy in my 88 Ford, whatever that banger he's got is that's on the radio. That the the Casey Musgrave sings the female part of that. Oh, that's the I remember, isn't it? I don't know what it's called, but Casey Musgrave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so he had a he had a gal come up from the crowd up on stage and sing that part, and she nailed it. And then in Toronto, he had a dude. Do we believe any of that's actually random? I don't know. Do you believe it's random? Do you believe in anything called love? So he, then he, in the Toronto show, he had a guy come up that was begging and he's like, can you really play it? And the guy, you know, whatever, blah, blah. He's like, well, come on up. And, and the dude, 
he nailed it. Like he knocked it out of the park. He played the guitar and sang the whole shooting match. It was cool. I think that's neat. Uh, Dave Grohl does that all the time too. I seen him bring the kid up. Yeah, like, how to play Metallica. Yeah, can I? And he's like, what, "Was it Metallica or whatever?" And and then like he said, "Can I? Can I say the cuss word or whatever?" And he's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Well, you may need to ask your mom first or whatever." You know, <laughs> it, it was just really cool. You know, yeah. I, I know he does that all the time. I think more and more. I think about it. I just need to bite the bullet. Buy the one day pass for Bourbon and Beyond, and we got that four days, and I cannot wait. I think we're. I'm just trying to still get it into camping. If we still get the one day pass, if we can still buy them, like if they're still, I believe you can. I believe if they're still available, I I think Justine and I, the warden and I, would love to do the one day with yeah with Zach Bryan. Well, that's what you know. Get down there, yeah, kind of just a little bit afternoon, and just have all day to kind of kick it, yeah. But uh, yeah, I uh, I look forward to I want to I want to see Zach Bryan bad um, because it just uh, never tell you about one me of those things. Tweeting Casey Musgraves, she never responded. Mm -hmm. uh, is that kind of like when you uh, tweeted Jelly Roll too? Uh, no, so Casey Musgraves, that first big song she had come out was called "Blowing Smoke." So I told her how much it made me blush every time I heard her <laughs> sing it on the radio. Oh my God, David! Jenna was like, "What the." F your problem <laughs> <That's brutal. laughs> hey so we're coming off the easter holiday yeah we were yeah do you i had this thought that easter is almost a bigger family holiday than what we give it credit for oh yeah oh it's yeah i mean i, mean, I, I know it's always a little bit but like i had this well, profound uh, like i i would be able to debate that maybe i think all right throw it out there well it's just like like okay we have a lot of family on my wife's side that don't live in town. Like they're not, they, they live out of town. They don't make the trip. They don't. Yeah. They don't, they don't make the trip for Easter. You know what I mean? But like yeah. Christmas, Thanksgiving, like a hundred percent, it's a, it's a, uh, well, I shouldn't say that Thanksgiving or Christmas. It's like an either or like they're either going to be at this one or that one, but probably not going to make them both. Because they live considerably, you know, far yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, big hole to get there. Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't. I mean, Easter's not even in the question. You know what I mean? Like they're not. They're not going to struggle to make arrangements to make it. I guess is that what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's for those of folks that are maybe more local. I guess maybe it does make. I don't know. I was just thinking about it, and I was like, Easter has all the feels of a very, very much of a remembrance holiday for. You know, family, because generally very religious and spiritual holiday. Yeah. Um, but I was just kind of thinking about it. And I love our Easter Sunday was pretty good. But that good Friday before Easter, that weather was just majestic. Yeah. And I love it when weather and holidays can line up. Yeah. To where it is something super nice. You know what I mean? Like Halloween, you like that slight chill. Yeah. You know, Thanksgiving, you like a kind of a nice sunny day, but you like yeah. the chill and the cold in the air. You can yeah. get out of the hot house. Christmas needs to be colder than balls with snow on the ground. I agree. I, but it just, I mean, yeah, that just doesn't happen. You usually get stuck with them real humid, wet, nasty-ass winter days. Oh, know. that's pretty tough. Gross. It smells like a Swisher sweet box. It does smell like, like very... Not, I don't know about a Cuban cigar, yeah. but like... You remember, like, your grandpa would have had the old... I, I'm catching, like, pipe tobacco tones from it or okay. something. Yeah, it's just a sweeter... Like an aromatic type. Uh, aromatic. What uh, What did you do for Easter? I mean, other than your pit ham, I mean, what... Did Papa Frank come over? Uh, and... No, we actually went over to Papa Frank's. So, uh, the Easter Bunny left, uh, hid the eggs at Papa's house. Yeah. And so, we went over there, and uh, the kids, uh, kind of a late... Rhett man nap for a while and um we just kind of rolled over there a little bit later and uh really not too much we had a busy freaking weekend i was oh. i was saying it earlier um i think tuesday of this week so monday we had a baseball game um monday the first raiders returned to uh victory 2-1 down there at Southside park yeah and then tuesday was the day that we had the storms roll through yeah which that was the second. I'm not envious of any school administrative official because that was a cluster. Oh, God. That was a cluster. Shout out to our bus drivers, too, like making sure that the kids, you know, made it to their destinations, uh, you know, yeah. and doing that. Yeah. So that night, 
I get home. I had homework, Dave. I was like, I told Janelle, I was like, I really need to get this homework done. And I was like, I'm just going to lay down here for a little bit. We Famous haven't heard much words. about school lately. This <laughs> Game term. over. Uh, I am in a construction uh, project management class. Okay. It's one of my MBA electives. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So I'm kind of learning about project management, uh, cost savings, how to estimate projects. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really, it's been in, intriguing. Um it's it's all asynchronous so it's all online at your own pace kind of like leadership was last okay. semester and so the bad thing this guy is but you did well at that in leadership yeah oh yeah, yeah. it was a, a for sure um he uh this class is taught by an individual that i believe is from egypt oh so he's got a wee bit of an accent and he doesn't go into detail in some things and his he does lives, he walk like an egyptian uh, he does. Hmm. Yes, that's yeah, been smart. it's true, but he does his PowerPoint slides, but you don't see him talking. You don't see him talking. It's just the slides, <laughs> yeah, like, and he goes through and he follows them. So there's some things that he doesn't necessarily explain very well, right? And then you have to do, and there's no textbook, so there's no textbooks. There's nothing. He basically rips it all, puts it on PowerPoints, and then yeah, regurgitates it for you, but. We got nice a cheap class. Then. Yeah, we've got uh, one more exam and a final project due, and then I'm registered for this summer. We're going to get into the finance world with another elective, hmm. and then I think we have economic analysis for managers coming up in the fall because I registered for that today. Yuck! Nice. So by the time the year rolls around, I'll have five. Sit. I'll have. I have about four more classes left. Hell yeah. Nice. Knock so, it out. Yeah, we'll be done in uh, uh, what did, May of 20. So what you guys, what your Easter consist of Sunday? Well, the missus was working. Yeah. So, uh, Seen that ragtag bunch. Yeah, yeah. Photo so, uh, hey, that was a hell of a photo of the smoker. Now, boys. who took it? Dixie. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's what I told my mom. She's like, nice picture of you and half of your dog. I was like, the trick was like, getting Dixie to hold the camera long enough to take a picture. Uh, I used my, wa- so I just propped it, it up on a, on the hood of my truck, with a water bottle, and then there's like a little button on your phone on your watch you push and yeah. it flashes a camera and then there's a flash. Yeah, it's- that's why I I came over to the lounge and uh, swiped a stand a tripod because I knew the warden was going to be all in on pictures. Oh, I thought you got it for another reason for your warden. Negative and. Oh. uh no. <laughs> Jeez uh, but anyway, I uh I took we took we took some photos on that too. I went to the Schnitz buffet and destroyed it. Good deal. I don't know. Uh big shout out to Granny Dina for making that happen every year because yeah, that's, that's like one of my favorite uh my parents didn't make it this year. They went to uh Arkansas. They were out there with the uh Baby Mace doing his deal. He's uh, getting ready to pack up and head home. Um, he got his start date and everything. So he, okay, so that, that's public knowledge now. It's a hundred percent official now. Nice. So. What's that? What's that? What? His start date up here at Crane? Yeah. So oh, okay. Yeah. So like he's uh, he's gonna make his way back home. But anyway, my parents were out there getting his house ready to sell. The uh, realtor told. How soon is he moving home? Uh, next month. Oh, yeah. Good grief. So, What's the uh, Texarkana? real estate market like good he said he shouldn't have any issues oh good uh three bedroom two bath and a cul-de-sac i mean oh, nice. and he's put a lot of concrete work into it re-landscaped uh, patio all kinds of shit so he should make it pretty he, he's he has made it pretty sellable but the realtor told him that uh she goes i don't really know how to say this but uh you kind of needs a feminine touch <laughs> mm. and, and, and inside there because she said normally um, in neighborhoods like this, people don't look at houses that have like motocross number plates and broken <laughs> motorcycle parts <laughs> hanging on their walls in the living room. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's mom was mom stuck around to kind of help him church. Oh, a little good. bit. Yeah, that's good. So where's he? Is he going to live at home for right now? Mm hmm. Until we can find something, he's going to try to move, you know, try to find something around here. So has he got a, uh, 
Is his end date where he's at, butt right up to this, or is he going to? No clue. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know. I haven't talked to him about yeah, that. I don't for know. sure. But yeah. anyway, he, uh, yeah, so so mom and dad missed out on the schnitz this year, but we uh, we got to talk that day and everything like that. So, um, but uh, I, uh, I took a real big nap on Easter. We all did because everybody was pretty zapped. Because see, we drove. Yeah, you got back. We drove about nineteen hours. What seemed <laughs> yeah. like that Saturday, and then we fired up these uh, blow torches there Saturday night when we got home, and then we turned and burned uh, up there to the uh, Cat Liquor Church at seven thirty a.m. for the Easter Mass. And uh, luckily, we got there with like fifteen minutes before it started, and we actually got to sit. We didn't sit together. We had to split up three and two. Me and uh, Big Fella sat like three or two or three pews behind the girls, but um, it was it was nice, um, uplifting um, stuff there. But uh, yeah, other than that, Easter Bunny came a little later at our place. Yeah, you know, it was he had got held up in traffic or something, but. He showed up a little later in the, in the morning there, but uh, I was going to actually, I told Pastor Dan that I was going to try to make it. I was going to try to double down. And, we were, we, it was like 10.03 when he, when we all stood up and we got to doing the dang thing. Yeah. He was actually saying that the, the organist is the one that, you know, she yeah, controls she, yep, everything yep. there. She kicks it off there. Yeah. But I was going to try to double down and go to church that I could, you know, actually participate in and, uh. But uh, good, good service. Couldn't make it. Didn't didn't quite allocate enough time. I thought maybe it was a ten fifteen start. Yeah. Turns out it was a ten start. So just so. right at ten. Yeah. I, and uh, I told that's what I told Pastor Dan. I didn't want my first time to be the guy coming in after the. Fight. Yeah. Not only not, not only being it's Easter Sunday and it's the most crowded day at church next to Christmas, but I didn't want to be the guy showing up late to a church that I've never been to before. I thought yeah, you'd been to that church. Negatory. Oh, I've been I thought in that it. was no, the I've, one. No, I've, I've been in it, but I've okay. never I actually. I guess I thought most, that was your home. No, you're I right. have I have attended a funeral there, okay. but that was it. I would say most attendees. You have attended. I thought you said tentative funeral there. Negative. You have no, I have tend. I I attended. Uh, gotcha. Gotcha. I was an you. attendee at a funeral. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Based on Wednesday's conversation, maybe you ought to get his social security number there, Dave. Yeah. Hell yeah. I uh, think it's everybody should. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Five uh, years, bro. April Fool's Day. Yeah. Was this week? What a Did flop. You guys, no. I think it's lost its luster. We. We had a little bit of one. Uh, our our foreman, you know, he tried to pull one on uh, a guy on the crew, and it was kind of like a <laughs> cue moment, you know. Like we had poured a st- uh, stretch a stretch of sidewalk, and there was one section that uh, had to. Um, unfortunately, the sidewalk would is now contains a. Uh, uh, mailbox that was unable to be moved to the other side of the street. So we, we poured a little jog around to make it ADA uh, to get around the mailbox there. But when we, I didn't because I was off for my foot and the foreman was off the day that they did the pour, but they just, we, we put a sleeve, like we, we, we sleeve them, you know, like we'll yeah. put a piece of, of uh, how's that again? Like an air dicker, gotcha. world class air, big dicker. air dicker, big air dicker. But we put a sleeve in there, and then you know we we were putting the 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 mailbox back in you know where it goes, and we messed. Did you know there's an actual um, legal code on how high the mailbox in in like the the opening of the mailbox has to be off the road yeah because i got a notice for it because mine's low yeah it's like 42 inches 41 to 45 and i think yours is getting noticed because of some it's about to fall off the post it's a little wobbly <laughs> which by the way we need to revisit that idea of moving them back up on the top so neither yeah. of us get killed whenever we're trying to get our box by yeah, somebody tough flying there. over the hill. But anyway, he came up and uh sound like a terrible way to go. He was saying something like uh getting your box. Nice uh everything looks pretty good here and he's like, "Oh yeah, you're putting the mailbox in, huh?" And he's like, "It's in the wrong spot." And of course, my, my Ricky, my buddy Clem, he what? He's like, "It's in the it's in the wrong spot." And uh 
he kind of like shrugged his shoulders like, are you f-ing kidding me? You know what I mean? And then he looked at her form and he was like, hey, April Fool's, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Whatever. But uh, that was really all I was. You know, uh, it was kind of like I don't, a little fluky fluky there, you know? I think anymore in this day and age of <laughs> wokesters and the deep my, fakes online. My kids did tell me. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, I was on the phone. Yeah, you were on the phone. I was on the phone with Dave about to, about something, and the kids came outside, and Eleanor was like, Dad, Charlotte's dead. And I was like, nah, <laughs> you're kidding me, which deep inside I was thinking like, yes, you know what I mean? Charlotte's the guinea pig. Oh. Yeah, Charlotte's not, It's not the aunt or anything. No, it's not <laughs> Aunt like, Charlotte or anything like that. Oh, but uh, she come out and like, Charlotte's dead, and I'm like, Nuh-uh. And she goes, yeah, she's in her tube and she's dead. And I was like, Eleanor. And then she's like, April fools or whatever. And I'm like, honey, that is savage. Like you, <laughs> like joking about death is not a uh, really April fools cal- uh, caliber stuff here. And then I go in the house and then Ellen, e- Evelyn just hits me again. Dad, Charlotte's dead. And I'm like, all right, goddamn it! I've already just had this conversation with your sister. You cannot joke about death, regardless if it's a lizard or a guinea pig or a hamster or whatever it is. Like it's, it's not a, it's that's not a funny, <laughs> not funny ha ha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Max walks in. Hey, Dad, Charlotte's dead. Yeah, three in a oh, row. Asshole. Yeah, triple. I just. Do you remember that the backlash that would be online when people do like the fake pregnancy and now? Oh pregnancy God! Some people would pray to have this and you're just throwing it around like it's a joke yes i've seen those people i just it just that's those are the people that have no sense of humor which i don't well, know that they're some of again, that they're slippery slope but very slippery slope i wonder if anybody's ever done a similar thing about abortions no oh, god <laughs> like some of these people would love to <laughs> 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 That's terrible. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, hey, uh, great episode there. Good, uh, it's the last one. Good. Uh, <laughs> We're done. Uh, yeah, that's cool. How <laughs> late? Schmish, Schmish, man. 27, 28 years old. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I, I think April Fool's has kind of lost its luster for sure. Because, I kind of forgot all about it. Yeah. It, it's like. I think had a lot had to do with it being Monday after. Easter. I have called my parents before. When, so how long ago has it been since like April Fool's has been on like a Sunday? Would have been oh shoot. With, within a couple know. years recently or whatever. <sighs> I don't know. Anyway, yeah. I can remember before like calling my mom, <clears throat> or maybe I didn't, and I just made this up because it's a really good idea, and somebody wants to do this, it'd be great, and just tell them that they heard it from me on the Wandering Dutchman podcast. But like, if you called your mom at like Sunday morning real early and said, "Hey, mom, I'm in jail," you know what I mean, or something like that. You know, I've heard of that before. Like people, you know, pulling those jokes before. I guess the last one I would have done would have been I probably April Fools my wife in Brazil. Uh, you know, you put the rubber band on the. Oh, on the squirter, <laughs> on yeah, the, the squirter on the kitchen sink. Uh huh. So yeah, it's probably been twelve or fourteen. Years. Yeah, we did that at work with uh, uh, Scotch tape, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it's got a lot of them. It's pretty good. Yeah, we do a lot of them. Uh, well, we used to. We can't do them anymore, but we used to do a lot of those pranky pranks. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty- now, I, I think that's kind of gone away, too, but I do like pranky pranks. Talk about scotch tape in an office setting. You scotch tape somebody's optical mouse. Like the little red light, and then it doesn't work right. Oh, Dave, you trickster. You, you hide their stapler. <laughs> That'll piss them off. You what the hell a, was you it? Put a what, whoopee cushion. On what did chair? they do in the in the office? Did they pour the? Did they put the staple and the stapler in like? Uh, no, they took his stapler. Right. But he took the swing line that he kept when they switched to Boston. The swing line. What? Well, what? There was another one where they put like they poured it in a block of gel or something, wasn't it? Like a block of uh, ballistics gel. A stapler? Or am I dreaming that? That wasn't. I've never office watched the Office. Space. Okay. Oh, the Office. Yeah. The Sorry, office. I was thinking Office Space. No. Because there's a big to do about the stapler. Yeah, like it's huge. Burns the building down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, calling back a previous conversation we had, your buddy Alex Murdoch 
picked up a 40 year sentence in federal prison. Alec Murdaugh. Yeah. Yeah. 40 uh, years. That's him, all. Didn't he run. kill his in, Well, in connection with a sweeping decade plus multi million dollar financial fraud crime spree that engulfed more than a score of victims in multiple South Carolina. So did the government okay. kill his family just to get him on that? I don't know. Sounds like he'll remain in do. state prison. This federal term will run concurrently. Well, that sucks. Yeah, he'll be. Uh, he's got life time. sentences. So I guess. What do you do? Drag him out of the old. Three, uh, yeah, forty years in prison for financial stuff. And then it also says the next hit was uh, attorney who represented Alec Murdoch victim will now join Court TV. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, good for them. Uh, Twenty dollar minimum wage. Met California started this week. That'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Twenty bucks for that's what I make. Isn't that ridiculous? I guess you could move out to California and flip burgers. Why? I mean, I wouldn't. No, I would. No, I'm not I mean, I was just no. I was just saying. I'm gonna start my voice one two three career. I've been turning away a lot of stuff just because I don't want to mess with it. Like, I get lots of offers to, like, audition, and I just... I do, too, don't. but I've never auditioned. I, well, I you recorded one, but I didn't get it turned in in time. I know. You missed out on yeah. the Subaru ad. Yeah. Oh, you could have been a Subaru ad? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have voice one, two, three accounts. You should get one, too, for baseball and sports. I don't know if I have a very good voice. Yeah, you, a great you do. Voice. Stop it. You guys you got a pretty mouth. Well, <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, cheer, couch guy. More. That sound like a goddamn Holstein in the background there. <laughs> are those the horny ones? Yeah, no. Them are Herefords. Herefords are the horny ones. They got horns on them. Is that what it is? Big horny Herefords. Is that what it is? Yes, sir. I don't know. Smoke, anything else been going on? You know, I feel like I'm way off topic, but I, I could be like a PSA. I had something happen the other day. Prostate-specific antigen test? Well, this is a public service announcement. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I've been waking up real early. I ain't been sleeping. I mean, I've been sleeping fine. I wake up, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Uh, but it's not been a long time, like four hours. So everybody's still sleeping, so I'm real quiet getting ready for work and taking my shower and getting dressed, and I don't want to turn the lights on in the bedroom and wake everybody up. Everybody, wow. because William sneaks in there every night on his little mattress. Anyway... He's got a little mattress in your guys' room. Oh, boy. Like a trundle bed because it comes in there so often. So we're oh, enabling. Oh, no. Uh, oh, wow, so Bill. He'll pull it out from under the bed and crash oh, shit. it on the floor. How do you not step on him? Well, you just know that he's there. Oh. He's what side does he come out of? Jenna's. Yeah. So The old sidecar there. Mm -hmm. Tough spot. Yeah. We think Wild Bill's a cock blocker. Guy. Little cock blocker. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Go back to your room, you little peckerhead. <laughs> the old man's trying to pat mama on the ass. <laughs> You'll learn about it one of these days, boy. <laughs> Dad, I already know. Unreal. <laughs> I'm Wild Bill. But at any rate, apparently that morning I had put my Duluth undies on in reverse. My tail flap was spun around to the front side, or, you know, the front side and the front side. Was your your the piss back flap side. was in the back. But I get to the restroom there at work. And, you know, that first, the oh, first you're time you hurry. use the thing in the morning, you know, you got to find the flap the first time. But I spent an ungodly amount of time standing at this urinal trying to find my pee flap through my britches zipper. Uh-oh. Because I'm, I'm not a completely open the drawers guy. I'm a that, unzip and reach in. Is that wild? We, well, so I, I, used to be, I used to be able to undo the whole drawers thing, I, and I got shamed covered, for it. We've covered this before. Yeah, it was and pissing out the window. Party pissing. Yeah. My topic was party pissing. Yeah, I yeah. just wanted to say that. Yeah, anyway, so, but yeah, so I'm going to reach into the zipper guy. Because there's a guy ah. that did this the other what day What happens if your unit ain't long enough to get through the flap? Well, maybe you got to adopt a different method, but I've not Which had I do. the issue. I'm a over the top guy. Okay, yeah, I'm a through the hole. The problem. Being, I bring my bag out and everything over the top. Really? Don't pinch off the flow a little bit there? Mm -hmm. No, mm. he don't care. He just dribbles piss down his front. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I ain't got no <laughs> white collar job no wear no. Fucking, look at impress. I ain't wearing no fucking slacks that's gonna show a stain. I mean, I just piss. God dang! I'll never forget you coming out of that. <laughs> 
Which one of the two of you was it? It was me. <laughs> <laughs> two times it's happened to me in public. Yeah, yeah. The Todd McComas episode when I pissed all over oh, my pants. You did. You came out those shrinkly ass shorts. Yeah. And then the second <laughs> one was at the gaslight. Uh, and I got up on stage and I had piss pants. The third one was at the god dang, uh, <laughs> at the Porta John at Chase's thing the next day. Oh, yeah. I'd pissed all over myself <laughs> that time. Uh, yeah, and it was cold. I, yeah. Cause remember, <laughs> I was freezing my ass off because I was, that was a chilly day. My pants. But, no, that was him. Yeah, that was oh, you yeah. pissed on yourself at Chase's because you were wearing shorts and it was cold. So you yeah. were double bitching. Yeah. Uh, Hold on real quick. Let me finish this yeah, thought. When yeah. we were up on stage with Overboard and we took that photo at the end of the night and Justine just think, just she, when they posted that up, you know, and she said, hey, just think in that picture, you were wearing your dirty pee pants. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Here's a question for I'm you. A bad dribbler. If you're in a restroom that has, and let's say you're just peeing, but they have where you can get the hand sanity on the way out. Do you judge somebody for just going straight hand sani instead of washing hands? I don't wash my hands. Very rarely do I wash my hands when there's a hand sani there. I don't know why I said hand sani. I think you look like a... <laughs> Go ahead. Tell us. I don't know if you sound like a... F I don't even know what I say. I will use the hand sanitizer uh, in, 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 as, in place of washing my hands. Now, if I... Um, Poop... Yeah, I'm going to wash my hands if I shit, but like, um, how do I approach this? If it's been a long day, uh, you need to soap and you, you pee and, uh, there may be some things that transfer, uh, not the urine, but like the Fremunda. Yeah. The odor of a, of a stanky dick, you know, and you got to go wash your hands up there, you know, then I'll definitely, uh, hit the soap, not the the sani on yeah. the way out the door yeah, I'm, I'm a soap only guy i uh but we don't have hand sanitizer maybe we do uh we I better think about that because i see people soap. leave and if i see somebody leave and not wash their hands that freaks you out like, you know I, it's just like come on man like who said they don't wash their hands ever Somebody said they, oh, Dusty Slay. Dusty Slay said that, not one of us. I was going to say, I don't. Yeah, I was watching Dusty Slay's uh, special, and uh, he said he's a big non-hand washer, which is weird. Yeah. Anything on, uh, you guys watched anything recently? On peeing? Huh? On peeing? No, no, no not on peeing. Uh, what the hell did we watch? Oh, Ricky Stanicki, which David, uh, we, we, I don't know if we've talked about that. Yeah, we I think talked we talked about, about that last yeah, week. That was a good one. Uh, I started that one on Netflix. It's called like Three Bodies. Mm -hmm. Three Body. The Three Body Code. or The Three dilemma. Body Problem or Dilemma or whatever. It's freaking weird. Like I don't have to do with anything. You said, have you been watching it? No, no, no. Like, what's the three body thing? It's just the title of the show. Oh. I, I don't know really if it ply. If it, I haven't got in far enough to see if it actually ties into the plot or not. Gotcha. I uh, watched a couple episodes of Bluey uh, this afternoon. With oh, right. Well, right. I was recovering from the. Uh, I still thought Bluey was a male dog, by the way. Mm -hmm. Female. Yeah. Completely. Crikey. Crikey. I thought he was. A, she was a boy too for the longest time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what caused me to. I don't know, man. I There's I a lot of. I, so I've been but trying. Anyway, I guess my issue was is that I felt like a weirdo because I realized I've been standing at this urinal for pro. It felt like two minutes searching around in my britches trying to find my P flap. Oh, uh, and that's going, back to that. going back to that. I, uh, which I don't think we ever finished that. And I really, yeah, we, yeah, we, we got of, off on a side. And normally I just let it go, but I've decided we, we needed to finish this car. because, okay, here, here it is. I'll say it. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a flap user. Mm. Like, um, for all I'm concerned, my underwear could not even have a flap. Could you imagine if it didn't have a flap? Well, so I've got some undies. Uh, because I'm a tight ass, uh, Rural King had yeah, some Duluth-looking boxer briefs on sale <laughs> for like $1.50 a pair a couple years ago. So I bought like... <laughs> Couch guy don't even wear underwear, so he's not a flap. I don't that think. sounds like a dangerous thing with zippers. I just can't. And he wears jeans a lot. That's what I'm saying. I can't you handle the commander You ever zip the head of your up? Yes. God dang, you want to talk about changing your life in a bad way. Like, yeah. That is, uh, that is a tough spot there. Yeah. Zip my scrot up once. That so you good. bought cheap underwear from Rural King. Oh, no flap, though. No piss flap. Interesting. Don't like it. 
But I used to not use them. I used to be an undo the belt, undo the britches, pull it all away, over the top, let the whole thing roll. And then somebody's like, what are you doing, man? Because we are at a buddy's place, and he had an upstairs loft in his barn. So to keep in it, there was no steps. It was a ladder, like a hayloft ladder. Yeah. We'd been drinking a lot of whiskeys. Yeah. So to keep from somebody getting hurt, we just took the windows out, and we were pissing out of the window. And he was upstairs. Giving, yeah, to the downstairs, and uh, not in the, the side, outside. Outside, yes, I got you. <laughs> and uh, he was giving me shit because I kept having to, you know, he had to wall it with the chain on it, and then your belt, oh, your knife, of course, uh, everything <laughs> going on with a knife. <laughs> and you have like, your Leatherman on that. Look like shit Batman trying to get all put back together. <laughs> but you got to stance real wide to keep your britches from falling. Yeah, down. of course. You're but doing the, the wider splits. you stand, the lower you get. And I, I mean, I'm a tall fellow, but these were some pretty high windows. So I got to where I was having to do an overarching thing. And he was like, just use the flat. That's the best part about being a dude is you don't have to f with what you're f***ing with. And I was like, what do you mean? And that's why I was like, yeah, dude, I don't know what the f you're doing. With Why would you? But the thing is for me, man, like, and I, I'll say it. Everybody, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I would consider myself average at best, but like you got it. Like you talking about, f you know, fiddling around with this flap and stuff. And it, it's just so much easier to just loosen your belt up first you know you don't have to like undo it but just okay see i would undo everything yeah Button, i'm just saying zipper, but belt instead of dealing with this flap and trying to fish fart around with it and get her wrangled out just reach your hand down in the front drag her out over the top now see i don't know that i that seems like a farther distance to travel than just straight out the front now I get it if you got your winter clothes on and your uh, bib overalls and your layers. Yeah, it's we've yeah. Yeah, I mean you, it's you hard gotta, to get three inches of pecker out of six inches of car. Yeah, but like to go we know up that. and over the top and then around, uh, you know the the quickest distance is a straight line. Yeah, right. So I feel like uh, the the length of the thing is less of an argument for. Over That's what the I'm top. saying. Like yeah, yeah I, I get I go for the whole package out. So then it's like a pool cue. You know, sitting right on there, and it just well, like you can go hands. And no wonder you piss yourself a lot because no. it just runs down. It dribbles go, down the sack. You can go yeah. handsless. Yeah, but then as it dribbles, it dribbles down the front of the scrote. This is a wild conversation about. Um, my, I wonder if there's like some discoloration on the front of your scrote from the <laughs> urine. Uh, I don't know. We can check it out after we're finished. Yeah. We'll have to report back, I guess. By the way, if yeah. this candle is cigar, I've never smelled a cigar. It's, <laughs> it's, good. it's not it good. It's not a cigar box, like cheap, cheap tobacco and cardboard. Yeah, I just, I, I love it. I know it smells really great. I never. It, uh, uh, thanks to Couch Guy for hitting us up. This uh, sarcasm. Candle Theory is the company, I guess. Candle Theory must be some sort of online purchase, but it's, uh, is, is something reminds me of my childhood about it. I don't mm -hmm. know what it is? Is it the flame? I don't think so. Resembles you the burn dump, the house the dumpster down? fire. <laughs> uh, but no, going. So after we're, we're done pissing, we done pissing now. Yeah, I just yeah. wanted. To, I never said why it irked me, and I just thought if somebody came in that door while I was trying to find my flap, that wasn't. I probably there. thought you were shaking it more than twice. Yeah, playing playing it, with yeah, the old five knuckle shuffle. You yeah, know, uh, yeah, flogging work. the bishop there. Yeah. I watched Homicide, New York. Mm. About, uh, about murder. Yep. Mm. Sure. In New York. It was in New York. Yeah. It was a, a state or I've city. I've really yeah. been stuck city on this song called Psycho. Mm -hmm. It's from the fifties or sixties, but it's about this guy that kills his ex girlfriend and her lover. Then he kills a little neighbor girl. Then he kills his brother's dog, and then he kills his mom. Um, but it's a crazy song. Sounds like a real good uh, it's song. Kind of a country, like a slower ballad. Hmm. Who like sings it? Well, uh, the one that you'll hear on TikTok now is something Kittel, K I T T E L. Um, but then there's another fella. I know how do you know it's not Kittle? Well, I guess it could be. I just assumed it was Kittel. But it's just called Psycho. You think I'm Psycho, don't you, mama? But, anyways, like you're talking about a little. Anyway, you're really? talking about homicide. It's a, you ought to listen to it. I really like some of them songs. Hey, did you see. Um Last month, title sponsor, Silo Ridge with Jason Haycox. Mm -hmm. They're getting a freaking kangaroo. What? Get out of here. Yes. God dang, I tried to get a giraffe. Somebody was selling a giraffe in Terre Haute one time. Uh, what? Yeah. So before Facebook Marketplace, there was stuff like Hoosier Topic. Look at it. Crikey. Oh, my gosh. 
I, man, I want a giraffe. What kind? Like what? What kind is it? Well, it's a welcome bouncy kind. Baby Joey to the farm in a few. It's short a weeks. little Joey. It's a Joey. I don't understand how you can, wouldn't they be considered exotic animals? Oh, I'm sure it is. Well, they have they reindeer. Have, well, you uh, so they probably do have a license mm-hmm. through the USDA then. Yeah. Okay. You got it. So in Indiana, you, yeah, because that's what got Tiger guy in trouble, right? Was not not the Tiger King, but there's a guy down in Cordon Way, I think, that uh, got in trouble for having a bunch of big cats. That's wild. Could you imagine that? I, I think I like having a whole them. backyard full of tigers and lions and jaguars. And I don't I think as long as you raise them from cubs. Yeah. Is that what you call them? A cub or are they a pup? tiger cub or a kitten? No, they're a tiger cub. cub. Lion I think. Cub. I think that you just form a bond with it, and then it just has your. Yeah, back. but what's that show called? Uh, Tiger King. No, not that. The uh, obsession uh, uh, about the 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 animals that you've raised, like that, they come back and kill you. You got to assert your dominance. Oh yeah, for sure. I'd like to see you assert your dominance for a to a four hundred pound. Hey. Bengal tiger. This is a guy. Heel cinnamon. <laughs> I'm the alpha. What? We well, yeah, got one good swap of the paw, and there you're done, bro. Uh, yeah, looks like a big. Uh, Look like uh, Caesar Milan yeah. trying to grab a hold of that little chihuahua. <laughs> yeah. Chihuahua snoot, and Dave's getting rock, rocked by a guys? tiger. Have you seen the guys on uh, TikTok that have like these exotic venomous snakes? For Kiss collection and keeping, ass. no way. Dude. There's no way. Why would you want? Do something you that could remember? Kill you. I was I was working at the mine, so it had to have been <laughs> l- eight years ago, longer than four years, five years ago. There was a drug bust in Evansville of considerable size, and they had like, I'm talking, they had shit tons of cash, shit tons of dope, shit tons of money. That's what happens in these shit drugs. tons of like Nike tennis shoes. There's I'm telling you, shit tons of flat bill hats and a goddamn black mamba snake, well, like all in one shot. Like, and you know what else is there? They didn't mention because it's normal. And I'm telling you, there went those lights again. Uh, I tell you what it was. What they probably had a bearded dragon and a katana. Those are the two things. You get a bearded dragon and a ninja sword in the same roof. There's meth in that house. Well, I've got one of the two, and there ain't no, there ain't no, there ain't no, there ain't no meth. Judging by my stature, uh, there's not much. If, meth. if you see an NG sword pop up in there, there's meth in that house somewhere. If the bearded dragon's still alive, the crazy living. thing of it is, is like, why would you want something that would literally just shut your body down? Yeah, I, I mean, think it's probably you keep it in there. In case you can get a drop on the feds as they're coming in, so you can throw this thing at them and have try to buy yourself some more time to get out. <laughs> Seems like a high risk I no reward. Pet, well, pet grizzly getting bear, away from the yeah. feds, you know, there's pretty high reward in that because they had the cash. Sounds like to get to Mexico or into Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just need to buy yourself. You don't need a lot of time. You just need enough time to where they don't know which direction you went. And then from there, you just got to keep running, keep your head down. This is where was it? Where was it that there had been one that got loose? Uh, that they were looking probably for it. Florida. No, it was. I don't remember where it was, but they were looking for it in the city somewhere. Uh, but it was like a cobra of some where kind. Where the hell did they find a damn crocodile? Like Tennessee or something? That somebody caught a crocodile in the dam. Uh, like so or Justine, uh, the warden. Um, you know where, where the river walks at? Yeah. And Ruxer's golf course. Mm-hmm. The, uh, Justine's cousin um, used to own a, uh, I think it was like, it was a reptile thing in Jasper. And they, they, they actually found an alligator in the Potoka River by Ruxer's golf course. I mean, it's just a little guy that somebody. Now, met. so they got it at the reptile store and then let it loose. Yes. Or it they had a like light. They had a license for it, or something, and then they yeah, flushed it down the toilet. Yeah, and it wasn't dead, and then it was still alive. So it ended up down there in Frog Town eating all the yeah the frogs. frogs. Yeah. Well, should you imagine just going kayaking and having an eight foot gator jump up out at you in yeah. Dubois County? Negatory Ghost Rider. That would be wild there. Now a gator or a crocodile. I don't know that I could best one of them. No bears, cats, maybe sharks. But a crocodile, 
or an alligator. There's just some things you don't mess with, Dave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got they they're so ornery because they do la blanca. They have them so many teeth and no toothbrush. It wouldn't matter if they have toothbrush. Your arms can't reach their mouth. That's right. Imagine hey. just the cantankerous you did. You had a little thing what? stuck in your teeth and couldn't get it. <laughs> I think it's time for us to take a quick pause. Let's do it for the calls. Wanderers, today's pause for the cause is brought to you by our friends at Southern Indiana Hardwoods. Southern Indiana Hardwoods is your exclusive provider of Green Mountain Grills in Dubois County. In the market for a new grill, Southern Indiana Hardwoods has you covered. Want to accessorize your new grill? Southern Indiana Hardwoods, they've got you covered. Just need pellets for your Green Mountain Grill. Well, again, Southern Indiana Hardwoods get you taken care of. Have an issue or need service on your Green Mountain Grill? Nick Merkley and Southern Indiana Hardwoods have you covered. Rejoice! For grilling season is upon us. Don't hesitate to call today and get the upgrade your patio or grilling setup needs. Nick Merkley with Southern Indiana Hardwoods is ready to get you grilling today. All right, and we're back. Here we are. This segment, as we wrap up, is get it. brought to you by our friends at Catering by Meyer. Yeah. Big shout out to them. This segment is brought to you by Catering by Meyer. It's April, and that means graduation is right around the corner. Don't have a meal plan yet? Don't panic. The folks at Catering by Meyer are ready to assist you today. From the classics to something new, Catering by Meyer can build out a menu that passes with flying colors. Give them a call today and leave the rest to them. All right. Hey, our buddy, and we got to talk about this real quick. Yeah. So our buddy Big Mace over there, Dave, made mention of a wanderer that was going to go out and try to marathon. Mm-hmm. He was going to go try to marathon. Mm-hmm. Just a nice, casually little 26.2-mile run. And unfortunately, an injury has sidelined him. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, to our buddy Braddo, yep. heal up, get you another chance to run another one. That's right. Which I'm surprised he's never not. I mean, the guy works out all the time. Yeah, he's. A, I mean, he is a specimen. They ain't an ounce of fat on him. So it was... Uh, Kind of uh, yeah, T's and P's yeah. Uh, to a, in a hopes for a speedy recovery, and uh, let's just keep working towards our goal here, buddy. We'll get you through it. We'll, so it's a team. It is. It's a team thing. And if you need Big Mace to rub your calf, Brado, I'm in. He's there. Yeah, he'll do it for you. you know, he'll slap a little blue blue emo on that some bitch, and he'll blue, rub it out. Blue emu. Blue says. emu. Wow. Okay. What's the other? Oh, uh, biofreeze. Yeah, that's biofreeze guy. Gay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, hey, it's time for Braddo's Three Big Things, brought to you by our friends at Merkley & Sons. Welcome to Braddo's Three Big Things for the Week, sponsored by Merkley & Sons, the ultimate destination for meat enthusiasts. I want to make a major announcement. The Raider Middle School Baseball Program exclusively sells Merkley dogs and hamburgers out of their little concession shack. If you visit your local concession stand and you don't see Merkley packaging, you're paying for subpar product. Demand the best. All right. Thanks to Bradley and John Boy and all the boys over there at uh, Merkley's. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, and up. they, uh, great stuff over there. Oh, yeah. Looking uh, for a retail job, too, if you guys know you're looking for a job. Well, I'm up. pretty happy with mine. They probably make me work over there. <laughs> well, I'll be over there slinging the meat, you know. That's hey, in this week's three big things, first one, controversial Titanic prop sells at auction. One of the most iconic and hotly debated props in cinematic history the floating wood panel from James Cameron's 1997 movie Titanic. We were just talking about this a week ago. Yep. Recently sold at auction for more than, this is stupid. Oh, no. $700,000. Hot take coming up from Braddo. The character of Rose Dawson was not a good person. Think about it. I think we all agree. Like, there was enough room for her. Yeah, and then the, her whole life, she just held on to that daggone diamond thing and, like, waited until she was 92 to tell anybody about it. Yeah, and then she What just a sweat heifer. Turns around and throws the son of a bitch heifer. in the water. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But how I hope a, she, I hope how she a got a prop, splinter. How a prop would sell for $700,000? $718,750. Unbelievable. What's that gal's name that played uh, her? Kate Winslet. Hey, yeah. Winslet. Nice rack on her. Well, and it was like all wet. Draw me like girls. one of your French girls. Draw, not, yeah, not paint. 
Well, you know, she was know, all wetted said, down hey, and oh, laying yeah. across the. I was uh, all people splayed. People pay for like you. I was don't. all splayed out on the uh, beach last week. And <laughs> that's what the warden said. You want me to draw you like one of your French girls? <laughs> no, nah, Jenna told me she was going to do it for me, but I'm going to have her make me a photograph like this old Burt Reynolds back here yes. this summer. I don't know what kind of hide I'm going to be on. But so you're not hairy enough, though. Well, that's what I'm thinking. It needs to be like a dolphin skin or something. A dolphin skin. He's a hairy guy. On Where the hell are you going to find a dolphin, dolphin skin? skin? That's somebody that you shrivel up like a piece of beef jerky three days after it's dead. Hey, Dave, you ain't got much you're laying on there. Just an ass cheek. <laughs> Might as well get a bag of potato chips and lay them out yeah. there. I just, I'm just shooting in the dark, guys. Yeah, I mean, well, you, know, you missed. You missed. Hairless. Hairless. Krispy Kreme donut. <laughs> Are coming Mexican to McDonald's. Dogs. The two fast food behemoths are collaborating to offer their That's customers so stupid. a donut coffee pairing. Who is this? Who's a, McDonald's. Krispy uh, Kreme and McDonald's. Another hot take coming from me. I'm not a huge Krispy Kreme guy. I'd much prefer a Long John from a local bakery any day. Yeah. Uh, as if America, and for me to say this is pretty bad, this but as if America wild. could not get any fatter. You know what I mean? Like you're you're mixing McDonald's with donuts. Like, well, come but on. Most people aren't going to go buy a sausage egg McMuffin and a donut. They're going to get one or the other, right? Is that or, or the, why they, in the, the hell? McDonald's in West Baden sells Krispy Kreme? Why would you go to McDonald's to buy a donut though? Like, if I probably got hair in it. No, no, Somebody no. You're missing run that. It I, the garden. I, if I'm going to McDonald's for a breakfast, I'm going for the. Greedy. Number one, steak, egg, and cheese bagel. bagel or the breakfast or burritos. Or the breakfast burritos. I'm not going for a, sausage da- for a damn donut. You know, speaking of hot takes, I'm just not a huge fan of McDonald's breakfast. I know any fast not. food breakfast. I know. Truth. I love Krispy Kreme, though. I'm not a fan. Like, I, I'm, I'm with uh, Braddo there. I like a bakery donut. Yeah, I do, too. When our I youngest was... Go down to Maine's and hook us up. When our youngest was brought into this world last January, I brought some donuts in for the ladies on the... Uh, I would say it was just first floor. I don't know whatever wing that was, mm-hmm. but uh, it was a big Nursery hit. Reward there. It was a big hit. I bet you'd have, you'd have probably been a bigger hit if you'd have brought booze or Chipotle. Oh yeah. Oh, we're on a budget here. Yeah. <laughs> Bridge collapse. Crews in Baltimore face an incredibly complex job as they work to clear steel sections of the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge mm-hmm. after a cargo ship crashed into it this week. Yeah. I know this is a serious matter. And not making light of those that lost loved ones. But seriously, a cargo ship just runs into a bridge. Well, we talked about it last yeah, week. Yeah, we hit it pretty well, hard. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's okay. Well, and that's okay because it is a big thing. And I haven't heard an update since it's happened. Have you guys? It's open. They've cleared the channel to where the boat traffic is back in action. But like they obviously didn't rebuild the bridge yet. But uh, so will they have tell to you check? What, that feller took out a whole ass bridge with people on it. And I bet his fine is less than a feller gets for going a little bit over the speed limit in town somewhere. I've seen some other videos of like big boats hitting other bridges lately, and none of them toppled like that. Yeah, yeah. Couch and I also read dissertation. On. I also read where some dude that worked. For this particular the Ukrainians boat line or like mm-hmm. or ran a boat similar to this said that there's no like you don't lose steering if you lose power generators like you still get like you can still steer the boat. La- wasn't it last week you were saying one of you I thought was saying you could see the generators trying to fire but yeah they wouldn't start yeah right but I don't understand if those are electric rudders though. Huh? How do you manually steer a ship that big? There's there's generators, yeah. to backup generators that are running all the time, just so you can get your rudders going. You may not have prop, yeah, but you should be able to steer. But that's a big ass boat. I imagine it don't turn on a dime. Probably no. more like a no. That thing takes a fifty cent piece, maybe silver dollar. Susan B. Anthony, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to say. I don't know. There's a lot of shit going around. Either way, it's a tragic experience. A tragic, uh, not ex- uh, yeah, whatever you want to call it. If you experienced it. it, would be a tragic. Yeah, it's tragic. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you what. I uh, was with a guy, and we hit a bridge with a box truck once. Yeah. Got stuck under it. How'd that go? 
little shady. I'm probably not going to talk about it on the internet. <laughs> okay, we're just going to leave that be. <laughs> hey, Brado, thanks for uh, sending in your three big things this week. <laughs> big thank you to our friends at Catering by Meyer for sp- sponsoring this segment. No. Prior to all this. Berkeley. But our big <laughs> shout out to our friend, <laughs> at Berkeley and Sons. Going all the way back to our friends at Southern Indiana Hardwoods for what they've done to help make the pause in this segment flow. Uh, because everybody needs them a fancy pellet grill. And go check out the new line down there they got. Check it out. out. Call Good them. Grief. Just yeah. call them. Just go up. Nick will set you up. Yeah. Just he'll, call them. Take he'll take you through care that of you. spot and get you rigged up. Yeah. And if you don't want to grill, get you some pellets. I mean, you never know. Yeah. Never know. Uh, it is time now as we wrap it up this week for The Last Pass, brought to you by our friends, Hof Outdoor Power. The Last Pass is proudly brought to you by our friends at Hof Outdoor Power. It's that time of year. Our friends at Hof Outdoor Power want to remind you that when you are mowing this season, do it responsibly. Yes, mow responsibly, please. Hof Outdoor Power has new grass cutting machinery and parts to help you fix what you got. If it's time for an upgrade, don't wait because them fellers know how to sell. All right, big fella, what you got? Um, so when you're listening to this, it's Friday the 12th. 12th? Mm-hmm. Yep. So that means that. <laughs> When was the eclipse? Monday the the 8th. 8th. Yeah, so hopefully that everything... um, Hope you didn't look at the sun without some eye protection. Nor let your pets out of the house during all this, because supposedly they go crazy. Oh, yeah, it's nighttime and day. (laughs) (laughs) Almighty. Uh, I don't know. Peace, love, and positivity, and uh, hope everybody has a great week. And hope everybody comes out to see us at the. Uh, Hopefully they came, came. They came out to see us at the comedy show. They probably did. Sounds like you said that a time or two before. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you came. <laughs> and that's all I got, Dave. What you got, bud? Well, if it's Friday the twelfth, hopefully I'm tired at work, uh, or you know, from recording all night after flying home from California. Uh, but we'll see if, uh, you know, this crazy eclipse and all the animals going crazy shuts down airports. Uh, if I'm not retired from recording, I'm probably making my way back across the continental United States in a stolen car, uh, you know, trying to make it home to California. Oh, yeah. don't steal and just rent one, Dave. Well, if they shut everything down, I imagine there's nobody I'm going to be able to pay to rent a car. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'll do what's lawfully available. Yeah. Anyway, so hope hopefully uh hopefully I'm home. Uh for me, uh obviously a big shout out to Curdy G. Appreciate it. Uh you allowing me to join you in the booth. And those that listened, I hope they enjoyed it. We tried tried really hard to make it uh a good production. Uh the second thing on my agenda, since this is April twelfth, uh my eldest child uh will be six years old. And uh, I remember it just like yesterday when she came into this world, um, and she is is a peach. She really, truly is wonderful, smart, intelligent, and uh, been very blessed to be a girl dad. Yeah, Dave, I know you have three strapping young men, mm-hmm. um, but with having two boys and then having my daughter, damn sure almost <laughs> prefer her most days <laughs> over the two boys. Because they're just a handful. Uh, final thing, um, we saw a very positive, um, and it's and it's weird that it comes up. So uh, some may know, and I think I talked about it last year. But uh, April twelfth is a is a crazy date because uh, it's a happy date, and it's also kind of a sad date. Uh, it's a happy date because our daughter uh, was born uh, six years ago. Uh, but five years ago, this was the day that uh, mom uh, told me and uh, my older brother that um, there was something going on. And uh, it's tough every year because it kind of starts the cycle to when she passes in August. Um, but I will say that uh, I have chosen over the years to make April 12th a happy date um, because from that point forward, I think I learned more about life um, than I ever have in the years prior to that. And, uh, it was cool. Uh, I think it would be when this comes out a couple weeks now, but a big fan of the program, uh, announced the good news about his wife. 
Um, yeah. And that, and that celebration there. And, uh, I love every minute of it and, uh, not everybody's battle, um, is like this fan of the program that we're talking about and not everybody's battle is, is like my mom's and, you know, there wasn't much we can do for her, but, uh, you know, for those that do go out and they do battle and they do it with their head held high and, you know, from all accounts, this is what we believe there. Like, uh, just know that I have the most utmost, the most utmost Dave mm-hmm. admiration yep. for those that make that choice and that decision to fight that fight. And, uh, you know, I'm sure your husband appreciates it. And I know that we've been along on the ride for a couple of those appointments. Yep. Um, and I'm glad the us three dummies could make you laugh. And uh, mm-hmm. you're always more than welcome here in the lounge. We'll make sure that Couch Guy puts pants on. Uh, but we'd love to have a special guest like that in here because I think it would be fun. So sure. uh, with that, gentlemen, another one down, a candle that doesn't smell like cigars. Mm-hmm. And it is time for us to go because it's midnight. And Dave's got to get to bed because he's going to get up at four to go to work. Be at work at four. Dutchman out. Dutchman out. See ya.